Luigi, look! It's from Bowser! I've taken over the Mushroom Kingdom! Dear Pesky Plumbers! Yo, what is going on everyone? Septic here and welcome back to the Pesky Plumbers Podcast. I'm here joined today by none other than Briannicus. So how are you, bro? Dude, I am fine, my guy. Like, I am chilling, grinding, hustle. You know how it would be. Just yes, chilling. sir, bro. <laughs> yeah. The grind never stops. <laughs> uh, dude, I live and breathe by the content at this point. Like, I, I just want to make sure I get some good stuff going for you guys. 100%. Understandable, bro. Yo, I get you. I get you. So, this video, this episode will just be focused on the Pokemon Presents and... Before yeah, I get yeah. started, uh, we got to say, how was the Pokemon Presents overall, bro? Was it as hype as everyone was thinking it'd be? <laughs> bro, I don't know if you saw my tweet. I think before it became before it became X, I don't know how the, I don't know what we call it now. But mm -hmm. one of the tweets was when they announced the Pokemon Presents, I was like, okay, this is literally what it's going to be. And don't ask any more questions. Then when I saw the presents, because like I wasn't able to, I wasn't even able to like watch it like live or whatever, like live react. Um, I was just looking at it because like I knew, I knew, and like everything was exactly how I said it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. like, yep, Pokemon Masters. Yeah, Pokemon Sleep. Got it. All right. Yeah, DLC for Scarlet. Back. Perfect. All right. <laughs> yep. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Like it was, it was whatever. The the only thing I actually really enjoyed was like the last bit with the Scarlet Violet DLC because they finally gave us a release date for one of them. And yeah, like, that was it. Like it, it was exactly how literally I literally no it. no expectations. Pretty much, you want to. You're like, all right, this is zero what zero expectations. Yeah, dude. And this is coming from this guy that wants a mystery dungeon game. Like, I want Pogamon to to go back to mystery. I'm like, nah, nah they, they ain't doing that shit. That would be great. <laughs> They're that'll not. Be, that would be great. They're too busy focused right now on like doing as much free to play Dead. stuff. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're too busy trying to get as much free to play stuff out and everything. I mean. I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I mean, I've already dropped a lot of free to play games and all stuff, except Honkai Star Road. I need help, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just that with with games like Honkai, Hon Honkai Third Star Road, yeah, but like, yeah, Star Road or like Genshin, like you know, like yeah, these is this is obviously gonna be free to play, but it actually is a high quality free to play. Then you compare mm -hmm. to a game like in the topic of like Pokemon, Pokemon Unite. No way in hell am I playing that and be like a committed <laughs> content creator. Like no no judgment to the people that like make content on Pokemon Unite. And I, I'm sure there's like a great competitive scene or whatever, but like I literally made an entire video on it. It's like, nah, dude, this, this sucks. Like <laughs> there's no point. Like in two years of this, no like come on. Like it's nah. like league, but at the end of the day, I'm just gonna go back to league. <laughs> Exactly. You you might as well just go back to Dota or League because they're better, you know? Like that's what it is. That's like the reality. But with Unite, it's like all right, great. Mm -hmm, exactly. Hey, that's it. It's like it's like a like Tower of Fantasy, I guess. When everyone's like, "Oh, yo, look!" It's like it's like Genshin Impact, but way better. That's the problem. When you try to be something like another game, you know, that's you start struggling. You get what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. And I completely forgot about Tower of Fantasy because, like, again, Genshin Impact just knows how to do free to play. Like, exactly. Exactly. Pretty much. Um, but going back, I guess, yeah, to the Mystery Dungeon. I would love another Mystery Dungeon. I mean, we did get a remake of the original Red and Blue, which I do love. I think it would be really awesome if they somehow did a remake of Sky. I think a Sky remake would be I absolutely would, incredible. I would bust. I would. <laughs> I, would, I would absolutely. Like, you don't understand. The reason why I say this is because Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky specifically, not even, the entire Explorer series were my first ever Pokemon games. I never grew up playing the mainline until I played Mystery Dungeon. And then I was like, yo, this is awesome. And then I remember seeing really? a friend of mine playing one of the mainline games. I'm like, that's Pokemon? It's like, yeah, this is Pokemon. I want this Pokemon. And so that's <laughs> and then like about a few months later, after I beat and fully 100%, we're talking about 2009, and I was able mm -hmm. to complete almost 100% Pokemon, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. That's insane. And, a few months later, I was like, we went to GameStop and there was like a refurbished copy of Diamond. And it was close. I think it was around close to my birthday. 
And so I told my, my mom and dad, I said, like, oh, I want a Pokemon game. And so I saw that one. I said, like, oh, I want it. And then from there, I just like, you know. That's insane. I, yeah, no, like, I get you. Yeah, so like a mis- a remake of Explorers of Sky, dude, like I, I would, it would be like, nos- it would be like incredible nostalgia. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't want it to be something like what they did with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I don't know. That's why me. I'm like, eh, you know, like if they do want to do a mystery dungeon, a new one would be perfect. A new one would be absolutely perfect. You don't know why? Because mm-hmm. look at the designs of Gen 8 and Gen 9 starters. It would be just perfect. Oh, yeah. Per- exactly. Like, I don't know why they're sleeping on it, but you, like, what the, like, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, Game for, I'm I, not livid. <laughs> the, the Pokemon company, their decisions, whatever they want to do, that's on them, man. I, I always complain about them, like, from here and there with my friends. I'm like, what are they doing? I want to see some improvement from them. Like, they're doing good stuff. Like, not going to lie, Scarlet and Violet did have some good things added there. Uh, but oh, there's, absolutely. But there's stuff that they can improve upon what they've done, you know? But That's yeah, my inch. biggest problem with, with, with Pokemon Company right now, because it's not Game Freak. It's not Game Freak. It's not Chunsoft, which are the people that made uh, Mystery Dungeon. Yeah. It's not Bandai. It's clearly not Bandai Namco with Poke and, and Pokemon yeah. Snap. No, like, they, they kill it. <laughs> it. It's not that. It's, it's the... It's the way Pokemon Company just somehow doesn't understand that their mainline games need w- more than five years at this point. Yeah, they need more time in the like oven you, to cook. <laughs> exactly, like a hundred percent. Like, there is no way in hell you can give me Scarlet and Violet when there's Breath of, when Breath of the Wild released in 2017. When you had Xenoblade Chronicles two in 2017, then you had Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Which, yeah, yeah sir. okay technically it's a it's a remake or a remake a remastered remake that's what i call it yeah, yeah. of the original game but even then look how fucking like they, gorgeous you, that you, game you is. can't like I, I i don't understand people that don't say it's a remake when these guys have to do the new models from the ground up like they they did completely yeah. brand new models I, I know they they uh what's it called when it comes to the textures and the background and everything they did uh touch yeah, up like on them enhancement yeah exactly but yeah. all that's those models a, yeah i'll go <laughs> oops no 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 that's literally what i was gonna say just ended it like but all oh, those models model? yeah <laughs> uh, i was like oh it's like oh shit i think i cut him off short. no oh, no yeah, you're yeah. good you're good like yeah yeah, because yeah. that's that's why i say like it's a remastered remake because they definitely remade the models of the characters and like the enemies but environmental design technically they for sure did like uh an enhancement on like the original because like the wii original was already gorgeous so like you know like yeah oh yeah what else can you really like touch up on yeah the backgrounds so, everything already looked gorgeous especially for a wii title and everything so they just try to make it like look slightly better on the switch so they didn't really have to do much with that it was mainly the models like the like the way the faces look and everything right yeah exactly and like again when you look those when you look at those games and then you look at pokemon it's like well how the hell does pokemon company have so many millions of dollars and they're not implementing that on the games that actually made them famous to begin with Mm -hmm. like it's like a lot of people tend to forget but game freak originally was like the main spearhead and then they trademark it to pokemon company about three years after around the time that they did the anime series is where they started trademarking creatures incorporated and pokemon company now it's so ridiculous how like basically the child that game freak created is such a greedy bastard that they don't want to go back to the to, like to the dad and be like you know what we're gonna continue and actually improve now they are because i don't know if you saw like i think it was nintendo everything that talked about like oh the people in pokemon company are actually now considering in quotations having uh a change up like their schedule on releases or Correct. whatever which yeah. i think is complete it's complete bs they're not gonna do that they three are. years from now we're obviously gonna get gen 10 mm-hmm. yeah pretty much sure they for sure they must have said that during the time x and y was a thing and look where we are now so i i don't truly believe that if yeah. it could happen but again like that should have been a thing since that should have been a thing since the moment <clears> they jumped to the nintendo switch exactly because like when you look at the way these release schedules are Especially with how modern technology is coming. These guys are releasing these games on home consoles now. This was a portable before. Now that we're only on home console like technology. It's a completely different story. You can't just expect to release a new game every single year or once every two years. You know, you have to give it time. 
to cook. And I'm glad that they actually did bring that up because it does need time to cook. You can't just release these games here and there and, you know, hope to make a profit. Out of well, to be fair, it's Pokemon. They make a profit out of anything like that. That's something I've, I didn't need to touch on as well because these guys just release a game and they always sell like hotcakes, dude. <laughs> Dude, uh, if I remember, Scarlet and Violet, I think like day three was already two million copies or something like that. Mm -hmm. Day three. I remember like we were well aware of the bug fest galore that that game had. Now I don't know how your I don't know how your game experience was, but I didn't. I rarely had the the bugs and glitches, and like I I completely finished the game and everything. Like mine was a fair like. I was a fair copy, but for sure, like the perform, like the performance of that game is just utter trash. It's just trash, man. I can't, like, I can't go back to it. I feel like the DLC, of course. I, I didn't. I don't know if I, I didn't have any crashes. I will say that. Um, I know there was yeah, probably no, some I bugs have. that I probably noticed. So I don't think I had any of the major crazy ones that some of these people had. I wish I had that. I would have been laughing. But yeah, dude, same. And you imagine you're just like live streaming or whatever, or just like you have a bunch of friends just playing a game of Pokemon. All of a sudden, like some like some shit happens just like what the fuck like, what? like, like big it's guy over laughing. here like giant giant yeah, player like, trainer you have a uh, ball yeah, guy man. trainer or like the weird i think the weird one i had was the hand like the little hand moves sometimes it'll be like kind of like in a weird position you know what i mean no yeah yeah no what i mostly got was certain npcs wouldn't face towards me that mm -hmm. was like two times and then another time was it, most of them were just shadows and like environmental design going cuckoo especially when you do yeah. the free camera like the shadows would pop in and out and i'm just like what the fuck is this mm -hmm. yeah i definitely had to do that so, yeah legends was i will say legends was more polished so i will say that which is really interesting and even then i had some complaints about the game but it did have its own issues but uh it's weird how legends Arceus felt more polished you get what i mean it's just, it, it's just that it, it bothers me a little bit where 2022 was like the year where we were really like excited for Legends, just Legends. And when Legends dropped, we were having the time of our life. I remember so many people on Twitter were like, oh, dude, this is one to make me go back and like enjoy the Pokemon games again. Like, this is such a fun experience. It's a, like, I'm so glad Game Freak is finally in the right direction. And then literally mm -hmm. a month later, they did not freaking hesitate be like all right gen 9 this yep, year literally the next on. month like, after are you are you kidding me like do you not understand the potential for dlc on legends exactly like, do you not understand like you actually cared about this game and then all of a sudden you're just gonna give us freaking play-doh set <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know bro like it, it, it's you, just like, it's weird i mean that's just their model like i know like when we mentioned the whole interview thing i know their whole model the reason why they do it is because the money they make is from you know, the merchandise, the, the, the shirts, figures, plushies, toys, all that good jazz. So these guys, they're, I guess, you know, the higher ups, the suit, the, the people in the suits, their, their ideology is that, okay, we need to release a new one and they need new designs, new cute ones, just so we can try to get more money off the merch and everything like that. Yeah, no, like, that's, we can, I don't know if that's like one of your other questions here, but we can go on a tangent about like Pokemon designs too, because like, it's like, you know, uh, and this is this is like, this is like my historian speaking here. Where like I'm looking at everything because like I don't know about you, but since like I like review, I like doing reviews or just like when I do my content. Like there's always like that like analytical work of like mm -hmm. right if I'm gonna talk about a topic, I need to at least know the history of it. And then okay. in, in regards to Pokemon here, when you look back at like the designs and like the people that were involved with the designs, especially like certain designs. Unfortunately, I don't remember their names. Like, mm -hmm. you see how, basically what I'm saying is that you see, like, there's a certain quality to each and every generation just by looking at the star Pokemon designs. Yeah. If that makes any sense. I get what you mean. Yeah, like, because like... if, yeah, if you look at Gen 1, like, you know, like, that's, like, the start of something. When you look at Charmander and its Evos and you look at Squirtle and Bulbasaur and their Evos, you're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're testing the ground with something. They want to keep it simplistic. And, you know, they, they're, 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 this is like their very first game. Because I don't know if you know, if you know, but Game Freak originally was a video game magazine company before somehow jumping into video game development. Oh, shit. Okay. I actually did not know so, that. Like, That's the first for me. Yeah. So, so, like, they were really, really, like, careful and all that kind of stuff. As well as the fact that the founder of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri, originally wanted the game to be all about bug collecting because he was fascinated by that which is why b drone gen one is fucking insane <laughs> um so yeah shout out to the bug types 
So <laughs> anyway, going back to like the designs, like you see how like they were testing the waters. They want to see like, oh, how is this going to work? So simplicity is best. And then with Gen 2, uh, those designs, those are Evos. They're simplistic as well, but that's mostly because they jumped into the Game Boy Color. And so because the Game Boy Color was processing color, they wanted to keep it simplistic to see like, oh, how, how would the colors work for certain Pokemon? So that's why Cyndaquil, Chikorita, and, and Totodile are very um, simple designed and with simple, you know, one, two, uh, one, two, three color palettes. Because like they wanted to see like, oh, okay, how is this going to work on, on the Game Boy Color? That and like a whole other tangent of how they almost completely lost the entire game until like Satori Water jumped in and be like, all right, now yeah, he saved name. gold, silver, and crystal. And and he everything. saved. He gave. Yeah, no, no, just gold and silver because crystal oh, yeah, they bad, bad, definitely yeah. like crystal. They learned their lesson. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then when you look at Gen Three onwards, like that's where like they started being a little bit more uh, complicated in their designs because they realized like, oh, there's a little bit more quality into it. We now know like the colors and things like that, and then like how. You know, 30-bit uh, sprite work with the GBA and a little bit with the DS. Like they were kind of more familiar with that, so that's why from like Gen 3, 4, and 5, you can I, you can kind of argue with six. Like those designs are like simplistic, but there's a little bit more detail to them. You know, like you wouldn't see like you, if if Piplup was in Gen 1, you wouldn't see Piplup with a little like uh, backpack thing that he has on his back. Yeah, a little backpack. Or back you here. wouldn't have like yeah, exactly. Like or or uh, Sni well Snivy or whatever, but like. You see how like there's like an evolution of this design now. Mm -hmm. Gen seven, eight, and nine. I don't know what happened with those, but with Gen seven, it's like passable. Gen eight is like they were trying to go back to the basics, like how it would be with Gen one, but mm -hmm. it's it's not as appealing. As, it, it feels very generic. And I will you, say though, I do then, like a lot of Gen 8's Pokemon designs. I do think that uh, a lot of them are pretty cool. There's some misses there, but I do like a lot of the Gen eight Pokemon. Like my personal opinion, oh, I, do yeah, like, yeah. I do like a lot of the Gen oh. 8 Pokemon. Oh yeah, me too, me too. But like, start like Mister Mister Rhyme, love him. <laughs> I love, love that guy too. I love, I love him too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they really did pop off with some designs of Gen 8. But like with starter wise, like you see how they basically were like evolving and then somehow went stagnant mm -hmm. after. I guess like you can debate between Gen 6 or Gen 7. The Gen 8, Gen 9, compare them. They look they they're like you could be so confused as to which one's for which generation like quaxley somehow you can confuse it for gen 9 for gen 8 and then sobble you can confuse it for gen 9 yeah like, like each one you know, like you can confuse so for different gen mm -hmm. yeah exactly like there's no distinction to be like yes this is from that generation exactly uh, no I, I i get what you mean though i get what your point is that as well and speaking of pokemon like that for gen 9 there's only a handful of them that i like a lot of the designs were missed for me personally in my like, what I felt like with what, playing Gen 9, I felt like a lot of them were kind of a miss. There's some I love, like Cerulege. I love Cerulege. I love Tinkaton. That's my favorite Pokemon of this region. Everybody loves Tinkaton. I love Tinkaton. <laughs> Tinkaton's yeah, yeah. the goal. No, there, there, were, there were a lot of misses in Gen 9 compared to hits because, like, when when in Gen 9, when you notice a Pokemon's design is a hit, it's a hit. Like, like Tinkaton, Cerulege, and Armor Rogue, especially because, like, they for sure were done by somebody who worked on Battle Network. Like, they look like battle network characters 100%. no i go you mean that's what everyone was saying like, yeah no like that's that's what they are like they have to be like net nabbies 100 percent. so <laughs> like those are like good designs and then um let's see what else for is a good design i think um the paradox pokemon are good designs no, the they're all like specifically cool. yeah, iron like, valley really good Iron Bat, dude, man, Iron Bat. They, they really iron. missed on the naming for that though, because everything Iron. Meanwhile, you had uh, well, I forgot the Screaming Tail, which was Jigglypuff. Yeah, like all and, the all the past like, ones had like different names, while the future ones just had Iron and then something. Yeah, dude, like Loki, I would have gotten Scarlet had it not been for Karaidon not using his fucking wheels. That's the <laughs> only reason I chose not to. That's I do. the only reason why I didn't. I, I, do, I, I do love a lot of the uh, past Pokemon, though. Like, I think a lot of the past Paradox Pokemon look the best. Like, I, well, except for Iron Valiant over here, which is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, but yeah. it's, uh, like, for example, like, compare, like, the name Iron Moth to something like Slitherwing, you know? Yeah, like, dude, like, obviously I'd be more scared of Slitherwing than Iron Moth. It's like, okay, whatever, you know. Iron... I just wish they, they were a little bit more creative with, the, like, the Violet Paradox Pokemon. But then again, when you consider the fact that they're from the future and they are all robotic and things like that, like it would make sense to be mm -hmm. like iron this, iron that. 
Because, like, it's, you know... Well, that is if Maybe the future stuff is real, which, mm-hmm. yeah, which we will talk about, like, in that last topic uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, since we are talking about Pokemon, um, like, you know, we're talking about, like, our thoughts on, like, presents and everything. I guess that leads right, us right. to the second topic here. Because, I mean, we're this is, this is still oh. the second topic, I guess. Because, like, basically, I was going to yeah. say anything besides the Scarlet and Violet DLC you wanted to mention and all that stuff. So, I guess that does fall in line here with what we're doing, you know? Yeah, so I know I know I said I kind of jumped the gun a little bit uh, for sure uh, Mystery Dungeon regardless if they remake Explorers, but if they're gonna remake like, the Explorer series It has to be with Sky 100% that's the definitive edition Yeah, like everybody fell in love with Mystery Dungeon on the DS because of that game and it just It's just one of the greatest Pokemon games of all time like without a doubt it is one of the greatest, if not the greatest. I'm well, willing to put that on the line. Well, the sir, greatest you know, Pokemon game IGN, of all time. If IGN you know? saw that, they would disagree. You know, they have a 4.9 out of 10. That is <laughs> good getting bro, out of that, remember, boys. Bro, that bro, is don't so get bad. Me started, okay? I, I'm willing to go back and do a whole Shin Megami Tensei 5 video like I did with them again for Pokemon. Okay, like I'm willing to do that. Remember that? I don't know. I don't know if we, whatever. Like I did like yeah, I remember video. that the the SMT five. Yeah, I remember that the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate how that's currently my highest vid, like my highest view video at the moment. I've been trying to figure out a way to like go past that. But it's just how do I get this video video. off my uh <laughs> off of a, what's like, it called my most watched videos? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, that's no, good. It's it's a good. It's all good. But no, like Explorers of Sky is the greatest. So like, if they're gonna remake that, I like I said, I don't want it to be like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Like, I want it to have like that Legends treatment because like, I I view Legends personally as like the Diamond and Pearl remake. Like, exactly. w- regardless if it's not, it's the remake that we were supposed to get mm-hmm. for Diamond and Pearl. Exactly. Uh, so something like that level of treatment for Explorers, or kind of like what they did with Rescue Team DX, but just amplify it a little bit. That's what I would want from Explorers of Sky. If they chose to do the remake route for that. Uh, in terms of like a whole new mystery dungeon, now that's what I would want to have the most because you have, because let's be honest, the last mystery dungeon game was Super Mystery Dungeon in 2015, which was during Gen 6. Mm-hmm. That's almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it's been a long ass time. So it's, a, it's been a long time for like a proper new mystery dungeon. And I'm happy that they brought back Rescue Team DX, but if they make like an entirely new mystery dungeon where it's not so much like the dungeon crawling with with how it looked back on the GB and the DS, but like if they make a mystery dungeon game where it's kind of like Mega Man Legends with like Gen N and Gen 9, that would be everybody would definitely buy that. That would definitely be one of the better Pokemon games of our of of this era. For oh, sure. no, if they, definitely. If they if they transform it like Mega Man Legends. That's like a definitive W for them. Oh no! Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yo, that, that's really the so, only thing yeah, I want to see Pokemon do another mystery dungeon. I mean, Rangers, sure, yeah. but that's not like on my high priority bucket list. I wouldn't mind one, but Rangers has pretty much been yeah. dormant for a while. They brought back Snap. Um, I was, I never got, you know, got the appeal of it, but I understand people who did love it. You know, just like it's basically an on rail shooter, right? Uh, but I never got the appeal of it. I never really played it, so I guess you know, I I have that disconnect. You know what I mean? The beauty of Snap was that it was like a home arcade game for Pokemon, which was like absolutely perfect. Like it, it you would incorporate the cute, the, the cute factor of Pokemon and then you just kind of have fun with like the idea of like, oh, what if we were like on the Safari route, like how they have in the Pokemon games, which by the way, I'm surprised. I don't remember if Gen 8 had a Safari route. I don't think it did. Like I'm kind of pissed that they don't have a Safari route in Gen 9, but that's another tangent yeah. aside. Um, going back with like Pokemon Snap, like it was like a home arcade game. Like they wanted, and it was perfect that Bandai Namco did it because I don't know if they were, no, because Namco and Bandai merged in 2005. So no, they, that wouldn't be the developers during like the N64 days. No, but someone else. I with who new, was. Yeah, no. Right. Yeah. But with new Pokemon Snap, like they really brought the charm of like, oh, like this is like an arcade game that like, let's say if you wanted to go like at a, at a, I, I don't. I don't know. I can't find any names of like an arcade. But if you go to an arcade place like Dave and Buster's or whatever, like you would, mm-hmm. like that would be like. So I'm really glad when you Pokemon that. But Pokemon, on the other hand, mm-hmm. I hate how Pokemon Company fumbled that one hard. The one like, thing I'm I pissed would, off like, about is the one missing empty slot there. Like that's the one thing I'm pissed off about. Pokemon tournament to me 
was the great was one of the most greatest and most ambitious things that Pokemon has ever done because we finally get to see how actual Pokemon battles could look like in like in an ARPG fashion. If that makes any sense. Okay, like, I mean if, like for example, like let's say like if Pokemon ever decides to do a fully ARPG experience or like if they take notes from like Xenoblade Chronicles or whatever, like they would have to incorporate like what Pokemon did in terms of like Pokemon move sets in the bunch. Like it's something like that's what I love about Pokemon is the ability to actually see how a Pokemon battle would look like without like the turn based mechanics or even like how in the anime where they're literally just doing transition scenes. It's like Piplup, use bubble, and then it's like Piplup, and it's like you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, and even then full, though, like I know they would definitely have to like change up a lot of the moves and also from Pokemon because oh, yeah, I know Pokemon sure. just takes moves from the Tekken characters. Yeah, like Pikachu's, uh, he's a uh, Mishima. Did you know that? Yeah, that that, that he, I think he literally has a whole electric wind god he fist. He does. <laughs> he does have. He does have an electric wind god fist. Like he's a he's a fucking Mishima. Like I think he takes like he takes some move sets from Heihachi and Kazuya, so he has like both of he them in, <laughs> implemented into his moves. So which I think is absolutely which funny. Is, which it's funny because you have Lucario and Empoleon there, and technically speaking, with their move sets, you could have like a Mishima clone there. But they chose Pikachu because, like, you know, it's just funny. But but overall, like, Pokken, like, if they brought a sequel to that, though, dude, you know, you would have a field day. Like, if you I'd could do, mine. like, a story mode, like a good, like, a good proper story mode, or, like, a main character that you actually, like, like, you know, whatever, things like that. Or, like, something that gets it going. And especially, like, if you were, uh, it's just that there's so many ideas that you can do with Pokken that, like, imagine if they really cared it could be at an evil. It could. Like, I think it was at evil before, but yeah, they, they, they didn't reach the numbers because Wii U. <laughs> Wii U and all stuff, you know? Yeah, so. Wii U. You know, yeah. But like, yeah, like, dude, like, Pokemon, Mystery Dungeon, Rangers. Now, with Rangers, I would argue, like, if you could just port it over or, like, do a collection of it, which would be great. Kind of like what with Capcom, they did with, like, the Legacy Collections. Something like that with Rangers would be perfect because if they tried to bring another Rangers game, it would sell, but it wouldn't be like it would be way too of a cal- it, it wouldn't be like a calculated risk on like Mystery Dungeon where like if they actually brought that back, they would make millions or like with Pokken, like there's a scene to be se- like there's 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 something like there's a crowd there. But with Ranger, it's kind of like it's a little bit too niche within Pokemon, not saying that it's not possible, but like if they were to if they wanted to bring it back, then like either like remaster ports would be great. And it's not like you can't do that. And it's not like you can't say, like, oh, they can't do that because, like, it was on a DS. Meanwhile, you have, we're getting freaking Mario, uh, not Mario, uh, Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon for the Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, no. With enough time and, like, they have a team that's just focused on it, we can get these games on Switch. Like, we can easily do it. And if they want to include, exactly. I guess, you know, their version of the D- the DS pen and everything, you can use motion controls with the uh, Joy-Cons if you really want to limit it to that. But Yeah, do like... There's a method to be done at the end of the day. It's not that it's 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 not impossible. Like it it's just that do they care enough to do it? Which is like the biggest issue with Pokemon Company. Because otherwise we would have had another Mystery Dungeon at this point. We would have had a Pokemon Two for the Switch. We would have had um we we would have had a brand new spinoff series like what they've done in the past with, for example, you know, Coliseum, Stadium, Our Revolution, mm-hmm. or hell like pokemon conquest you remember conquest i, I wanted that, that game one. i like, wanted that game after yeah, it got in the I, fire me too. Dude, me too i always wanted to try that game out but it never really felt appealing mm-hmm. yeah like, exactly was, what, 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 like what year it came out like let's be real like 20 2011 that's my guess 12 I think 2010 2011 i'm gonna i'm gonna go let me yeah yeah if anything look it up it's like somewhere around there because i know when it came out i just knew of it existing I just didn't care. Like, I was just like, oh, that's cool. 2012. So, during the last uh, stretch of Generation 5. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. So, 2012? Which is insane. Like, yeah, like 2012. Which mm-hmm. is insane, too, to go, to kind of tie back with Generations. It did not give a shit in terms of Generation 5 when you think about it. Because Generation 5 started in 2011 and then ended in 2013. Yeah, like, that was... like the, if For North Americans, it was the shortest. Because I know in Japan, it began in, like, September 2010. So, they had the full three right. years. We only had, had three for, for us. It's like two years and a half. 
Yeah, exactly. So we only had two years, so we didn't get to like fully like embrace Gen Five. They were trying to like get that out ASAP because I know at the time it was like one of their worst selling uh, generations and all that stuff. I hate the revisionist history of Generation Five. The more I think about it, because like mm-hmm. everybody hated it back in the day. Meanwhile, I was really enjoying Gen Five. I, I like I around that time, like really enjoyed Gen Five. It was another Pokemon game. It was really fun. It was really enjoyable. And then, like, obviously, Grant's is like, oh, you weren't able to get, like, all the other Pokemon because, like, they wanted to make it, like, a whole new 151 uh, for, for, like, the first game. And then Black 2 and White 2, they realized, you know what? Everybody loves all the Pokemon. Let's just bring them up. Let's just bring them back there. Which so I think regard- was a good idea. Yeah, which was a super good idea. Like, if I'm being completely honest, when people think of Gen 5, automatically in their brain, it's definitely Black 2 and White 2. Agreed. In their mind. They, they would they would think of black two and white two and for some of us old timers so like you me toya because she's a massive fan like on mm-hmm. twitter uh well she's a massive fan of n but yeah you know, but but like we're us old timers like gen we we associate black and white one with gen five but the Agreed. general consensus is always going to be black two and white two because like they, they popped off with that one like off, black like two and white two like wouldn't be good if it wasn't for like you know like what black and white brought to the table you know what i mean black and white brought this whole story yeah, exactly was absolutely amazing and then it just carried that over to black two and white two and then just added some extra pokemon continued off the story and it was great there was like some things that would have wished the would have been added like a battle with your uh your the other protagonist you know hilda or hilbert would have been pretty cool yeah but you know right. th- that's more like nitpicking and all that stuff uh but what we did get yeah, though exactly. i will like like critique what we did get and what we did get was like a phenomenal game a uh, really fun one at that with some amazing like pokemon amazing move sets and a lot of experimentation you know yeah like animation wise sprite work music dude like it's no joke and i know it's been overused so many times but it's no joke when people say gen 5 was the peak it was it was like, like gen, like for me, my bias starts with Gen three, so it's like it starts with Gen three to five. Like that's where, like, I think Pokemon as a whole, like, was at their peak, and everything. And then after yeah. that, like, it slowly went down. Yeah, exactly. No, for me, I was like, like I said, I was the Gen four kid, so like, I I grew up at the high point of Pokemon because mm-hmm. like the way I see it is that Gen four was the epitome of Pokemon. Meaning, when you think of like Pokemon, your mind either automatically or when we grew up growing into like the franchise now it's like for example we're technically old gen the new gen so like new gen would be like people that grew up with like x and y uh, all the 3d games and then for us like you know from gen through from like the classics to gen 5 mm-hmm. plus old gen when we think of pokemon like all of pokemon and media and things like that our mind always goes to gen 4 because gen 4 was the perfect catalog of pokemon it was the perfect region to demonstrate those catalog of Pokemon. It was the era where the anime was arguably at its good, like at a good, uh, not peak, but it was like close to being like at its like uh, yeah, at its highest point. It, it was peak. Yeah, it was like at, at its highest point. All the movies, including those of Gen three, uh, were just incredible. So like gen 4 was like the moment to really feel like yeah i'm a i love pokemon i am a pokemon fan with gen mm-hmm. 5 it's a little bit weird because like i said like with the whole like 151 new pokemon they kind of in, in some ways you can see that in some ways you can argue that pokemon black and white was a soft reboot of the franchise because of the 151 exclusive pokemon because they want to really emphasize on story the the graphical like design of that game so Gen 5 was kind of like that reboot where like, yeah, we're still going to have all these Pokemon, but we kind of want to shift it to like a new direction in terms of like how we want to present Pokemon. That's why when you look at Gen 5, Gen 6, they're kind of like similar to each other, either by like the protagonist designs with Calum and uh, Hilbert with the story beats and patterns of like, oh, like Lissandre, like whatever his moral dilemma with N and his moral dilemma, things like that. Like, that's why, like, they really wanted to, like, showcase that style of Pokemon. Not like It's not like they didn't do that with the other generations. It's just with the other four generations, it was all about maintaining a level of, like, a community with Pokemon. Exactly. But 
at the end of the day, I mean, that's, I don't even know, like, what they're doing. Like, they, they had some really, really good stuff back then. And, you know, as time's gone on, like, I guess I've kind of questioned myself of, of, am I truly a Pokemon fan? Like, that was something I did ponder. And also, if it was around the Sword and Shield days and everything. I do know that I still consider myself a Pokemon fan, because if I wasn't a Pokemon fan, I would not be playing, replaying, like, these Pokemon games, yeah, like, exactly, every year and yeah, everything. No. But I know for a fact that I am, like, a fan. I just want them to improve. Um, And, you know, like, bringing this back, I guess, like, the issue with Pokemon Presents, where we talked about all these spinoffs, is, like, it shows where their priorities are at. And and their priorities are more about, like, making as much free-to-play games as possible uh, in order to just pretty much get as much money as possible. And I feel like there really is no point for a lot of these Pokemon Presents, unless they, like, have, like, these new, I guess, AAA experiences, we can say. Because these, like, these free-to-play games, like, I, I don't feel like they should be in the Presents at all. Like, there's nothing really getting me to be like, ah, oh, yes, Pokemon Presents. I'm so excited to see, like, Pokemon Masters like, news. You get what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, man. I'm excited to get those 10,000 acorns in Cafe <laughs> Remix. Let's go. Like, yeah, you already know, no, bro. Totally oh, let's get, get it. Like, I don't care, bro. You know? Like, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no, we don't care. Like, for me, like I'm like on the same boat with you with Pokemon. Like I'm a ma- I'm still I'm a diehard Pokemon fan no matter what. Like I don't care because like I grew up with a franchise and things like that. And like obviously that's one gross with the franchise. And I remember making like a really really old video that's still like going on where like I made this point specifically and so many people misinterpret it where it's like the more you you can love Pokemon all your life with regards to media, the games, or, like, which games, generations you played. But, mm-hmm. Like, when you grow up, like, for us, because we're around the same age, like, when you are mm-hmm. when you were 10 then, like, you didn't really care about, like, how a game would be. Like, a no, game was good, not. a game was bad. You didn't care. Like, you mm-hmm. just played the game. That was like, pretty, I remember yeah. so many... Yeah, like, that's why I love Sonic Heroes. Because, like, that was the game that I remember playing a lot, and... Yeah, is it a bad game graphically? Yeah, sure, level design, whatever. But like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I, I didn't care about that as a kid. Like, yeah, as, yeah, as a kid, man, I, I, I thought Sonic Heroes was amazing. I thought Sonic Heroes was amazing exactly, as a kid. Exactly. Yeah. But like, when I got what, older, it, it, I saw the problems with the game, and I'm like, damn. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Like, as you get older, you experience new games and new genres that you weren't familiar with. So, like, as I grew older, I started playing, you know, Resident Evil. I started playing Uncharted. I started playing Last of Us. I started playing, you know. Uh, other RPGs like Persona, Xenoblade Chronicles, you know, you start increasing like your exposure to, you know, other games out there. Yeah, your library. And then when you look at Pokemon, you kind of have like that bias in your head of like, oh, this should be like this. This should be like that. Like, why is it not like that? But in reality, Pokemon Company's mentality is that these are, we're just going to keep getting those 10 year olds, just like how we got you with Gen 4, even though like Gen 4 was still good games, mm-hmm. you know, but like just like how we got you in those generations, we're still going to do it with that. And then, you know, especially when they do in the holiday season where like parents want to get something for like Christmas or whatever, like they know, like they know what they're doing. So like they're, they're, they're 100% trying to target like the younger demographic the kids, and they're yeah. treating Pokemon as that like it's only for the younger demographic yeah you're part of it and we we appreciate your input but we don't care yeah they really like, don't little little timmy is giving us their like his, his allowance like that's what we want at the end of the day yeah so they, they just try to focus on because they know us older fans are going to buy it regardless of the case they try to i guess try to get as many new kids as possible in order to like play the games and everything like that so they'll do whatever yeah, they exactly. can but right now, I will say, though, Scarlet and Violet did a really good job at maintaining that audience, uh, the older audience. Like, um, I mean, at this point, I feel like we can talk about spoilers for Scarlet and Violet, right? Like, uh, yeah, it's, what it's they, almost a year now. Like, what they point, did, yeah. at, you know, what they did with the professor and all that stuff, that was, that was, that hit. That was, that was, that was yeah, super no, that good, was man. Perfect. That was perfect. Like, yeah, no, like, I will say, I will say that with Scarlet and Violet, and the reason why we say all these things is because, well, despite the fact that, it released around the time Legends Arceus did. Like, we had Legends in January, and then November we had uh, Scarlet and Violet. Um, they for sure did take some notes from Legends Arceus in terms of a story presentation and a story interaction, which, funny enough, I would argue, I don't know, like, I'm not, like, a, a data guy or whatever, like, play, like OJ Player Essence, because he, he's deep into, like, the statistics of games and such. Mm-hmm. But I would argue that if you were to take a data pool of people who played legends arceus 
a hundred percent that data pool would be people from our age gauge from our age range a lot of the yeah that, a lot of people play gen 4 growing up and everything i definitely exactly agree. Exactly. So Legends Arceus was for us. Well, the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was probably for like the little Timmy, like I said, who probably never played a game like we did, which I would which I would understand why they did it that way then. But even then, like they still could, you know, do a little bit of tweaks here and there, especially when you compare that to Oraz, you know, but, you know, still. So mm -hmm. with, with all that said and done, like with with Scarlet and Violet, they did take some notes, like the story direction in terms of allowing, not allowing mature elements, but allowing the mature elements that were always there to actually be more uh, explicit, to actually tell you, yeah, this professor died. Yeah, this this is from the future. Yeah, the, you know, uh, Area Zero, for example. Yeah. Like, Area Zero is by far the darkest place, which is ironic because it's filled with light, but it's the yeah. darkest place in the entire Pokemon, in the entire Pokemon lore and universe. Yeah, like the My whole opinion. thing about the professor dying was definitely yeah. something I did not expect. Uh, I, how I, it I seems have, like... I have a whole theory on that, which mm -hmm. I think is like, you know... Which will fall in line, I guess, like with what happened um, to, I guess, the DLC, which uh, let's, let's real quick, I guess, talk about that because there's really not much that we can say except for the new Pokemon because... If I remember at the end of Scarlet and Violet, um, Arv Arvin, well, how, what was his name again? Arv Arvin? Arvin. Arvin, Arvin, yes, correct. All right, perfect. So, Arvin, um, I know he mentions oh, about like the book. Call him Pokemon Sanji. <laughs> Pokemon Sanji. <laughs> I like Arvin. The guy was the go, and he was the one that I didn't really he care about awesome. when uh, I first met him until after I beat the game. I'm like, damn, bro, you really are the goat. Um, but when I let, let me say this real quick when I started playing uh, Scarlet and Violet, like, I knew there was like the three routes. And for me, I was like, okay, they're really, like, from the moment you start the game, like, yeah, they were emphasizing Nomona, but that's because, like, yeah, she's, like, the rival and whatnot. Like, that's what we expected. Yeah, you know, for the but main story when and all. Arvin was shown, like, from the moment he was shown, my my mind immediately, like, yeah, he's going to be important later. There's, he's for sure important. No yeah, way same in, goes like, for Penny. No way in hell, like, you know, exactly. same. Yeah, but with Penny, it was, like... Penny was like a hundred percent like a side mission kind of thing, like a hundred, like meaning like yeah, it's important. And you know, there was like a development to her character. She's like, by the way, she's British, if you remember, like she's from Galar. Yeah, she is. I forget, I forget about that. Like she's from Galar, so I like that little nod to Gen Eight. Yeah, so you already know. So when she's story, released in uh, Pokemon Master, she's gonna have the accent. I, I well, I play it in Japanese, so but we'll oh, see. Oh, no. uh, oh wait, Master? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play Masters in Japanese. Ah, uh, okay. In my opinion. I no no offense to the English cast, but like, you know, which is another thing. Like, dude, oh my God, Pokemon Company. Voice what acting, please. <laughs> why, why do you have voice acting in Master, but you don't have voice acting in your mainline games? I don't know, bro. I, I feel like they're just trying to it's, cut costs. It's so it backwards. Sense. It's so backwards. It's so bad. I hate it. It's so, but anyway, <laughs> going back to what I said with Penny, like, her entire route was like mostly. Um, it was like a side quest ish, you know, like, yeah, it was important. It was nice to know more about Penny, but there wasn't much of an emphasis with her on like Nimona and uh, Arvin. Mm -hmm. It was like you, you knew like they were important to some degree towards like the adventure with Nimona a little bit less than Arvin because like it's to be expected, the whole rival stuff and things like that. But it was fun seeing her basically be the Pokemon Goku of the Pokemon. You know, Go you know? Yeah, true. Just wanting yeah, us to get stronger Pokemon and everything. Goku. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, oh, you're. You must have strong Pokemon. Can I fight? Like, can I fight? Uh, <laughs> can I fight you? Nimona's awesome though. Like, no, she's I, hate, good. I hate how, yeah, I hate how Twitter basically ruined her character because they didn't like how awesome she was. I think uh, she but, was good though. But yeah, I think she was amazing. Back, I love her. Yeah, but going back to Arvin though, like Arvin easily stole the show, and like yeah. he did mention yeah. something, um, where after you beat the whole game, he bring he mentions about the book, talking about the paradox Pokemon and everything. But at one point, he mentioned something. I forgot exactly what it was. But when you look at the book, that's where you start to see, like, this weird, like, terra, the terrestrialized thing, which is most likely the yeah. turtle um, and all that stuff. Terrapical, but they mentioned, yeah, yeah. they mentioned something about it being a dream. So I feel like, at least for the second DLC, they're going to confirm that this thing like the whole paradox pokemon all these past and future pokemon are all like imaginations and dreams or something like it was basically answering the dreams of of sada and turo uh, that's what that's what i'm going with uh that's very 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 deep and everything but i feel like it's gonna Bro, just it, reveal that everything was just a dream 
If that's the theory, then Sara Sara had the better dreams, my guy. Duro <laughs> was not. Bro needed sleep. He like uh, bro. I'll, I'll tell you all my I'll Pokemon you my will have iron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you my theory because my theory has a little bit of like a continuity to it, because you know, again, like the history in me. Uh, by the way, I gra graduated bachelor's in history, so yeah, I'm using it for Pokemon. Let's go. Yes, but, sir. <laughs> huge congrats yes, again. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So my my theory with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Area Zero and the DLCs is that uh, it actually is time travel because when you compare, for example, when you play Legends Arceus and you look at Mount Coronet, you see how there's the space time distortion, right? Like yep. the, the, you you look at the shape of it and the colors of it, uh, it looks very similar to like the lab that you enter uh, when you fight Sara and Turo. Like, same color scheme, same sort of, like, vibe to it. Yeah, the final uh, area. Final area. So, there actually is, like, the component of, like, time travel. We're like, yes, these Pokemon did exist in the past, and these Pokemon did are existing in the future. Uh, so, I genuinely believe that it is real. Now, in terms of Terrapagos and, like, Heath, which is, like, 200 years uh, of, like, Area Zero, I think that those 200 years, what I'm saying... Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that Legends Arceus and the exploration of Heath from 200 years in Area Zero happened at mm -hmm. the same time. And because okay. of the distortion that happened in Hisui, that created a ripple effect and affected Area Zero where he saw those Paradox Pokemon that are, okay. that are from the future or from the past. And so because of that, he was super excited and he actually did see those Pokemon. Like, there aren't just an imagination and things like that. Now, in terms of, like, the drawing of, like, the Virizion or the, the Suicune, that was probably their thoughts of, like, what it could look like, and then we ended up seeing what it actually looks like. But there weren't okay. imaginations of a person. Like, we, they were, like, thinking, like, oh, it, could this be it? But then, like, a discovery or, like, a, an observation, interpretation. So, mm. because, of, because of what happened in Legends affected Area Zero and Scarlet and Violet and all of that... Um, Basically, what the DLCs are going to do with Terrapagos is that Terrapagos is like an ancient Pokemon that was like from beyond time or whatever, like Arceus. And he's the reason, and that Pokemon's the reason why Pokemon types exist. Especially when you consider the fact that Terrapagos also has a similar typing sort of gimmick to it, like Arceus. Or yeah, the whole, it has so all play. the Terra typing, I guess you can say. Exactly. And there, they did really tease is. that. They did tease that recently where they were showing off, I think, the starters. They can get them all. They did tease that with yeah, exactly. one of the other legendaries or something is going to be introduced. I forgot his name. The one with the mask. Um, yeah, and when he... Name, when he over, Something over like that, yeah. I'm really like uh, going off on a side tangent. Those, those other three ones, I forgot the name of them. The, the, what were yeah, they? No, they're, they're all like they're, monkeys or something? There. Like I a bear, once a monkey, once a a bird. Bird, okay, yeah. I'm really I do not vibe with any of them, but <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's yeah, besides no, the yeah, point. Yeah. The one with the mask like though. The yeah, like the ma the one with the mask, yeah. he had like this weird terror thing that like it had like it looked like it had like every element or something. <laughs> he became the yeah. avatar. <laughs> he he mastered yeah, yeah. he mastered so, all the types. Yeah, so something like that is definitely gonna happen. Uh, I hope so, at least. I asked my theory in terms of the story because, like, it would be a, such a miss opportunity not to do that, like, continuity. It would be such a miss opportunity. And it would also show that, oh, Legends isn't, like, ancient Hisui, but it was, like, Industrial Revolution, like, 1800s, like, because, uh, like, you have to remember, like, technically speaking, like, and I, I did, like, a whole, like, side paper analysis on this on my own. I, I wish it was, like, for college. But <laughs> I, I, the more I, I looked back at Legends, the more I'm looking, like, oh, this is, like, Meiji and Restoration period of Japan. Like, 1860s, eight, like, 1850, 1860s. Like, it has to be. Yeah, they, they, they definitely inspired like, it by uh, a period of time in Japan, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's no way it's, like, ancient period time. Like, it, it can't. It, it's not. No way in hell it's not. So mm -hmm. my guess is like those 200 years are connected and then, you know, Terrapagos and Arceus has a connection in terms of like, oh, like there's a reason why every Pokemon has a typing and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, there's like a whole other tangent somehow when you throw into the mix of like mega evolutions, so like the Terra crystals or the reason of that. But that's that's like an entirely different thing. No, no, I get you. I get you. That would be very interesting if they do follow up with that. Only time will tell, I guess we can say, right? Yeah, I guess only time will tell. It's September, like, my guy. <laughs> the most, like the most obvious theory right now is that all the paradox Pokemon are like dreams. They're fiction. Yeah, um, that's. 
so we can't it's really like say the much. Famous theory, but I I like to be on the other side of history and be like, nah, bro. We're going real. the opposite way, bro. They're real. They actually happen. You're just hating. <laughs> but You're just hating. But let me see. Other than that, like besides, I guess the new Pokemon we could talk about. There are new trainers. Uh, they did highlight the other ones are already confirmed. Adamans, uh, uh, this uh, descendant. Bro, yeah, I descendant. Can't Adam, yeah, I can't believe. It. Dude, I made it. Ah, oh, dude, I wish people gassed up this tweet I did. Where I think we could do spoilers for Xenoblade Three, right? Yeah, it's been already a year. Do that, right? uh, if you're it's watching this and haven't year. played Xenoblade Three, uh, cover your ears. <laughs> skip, skip to like whatever listed here, post edit, whatever. So anyway, I made a tweet where it's like, damn, I can't believe 2023 was the year of these two chats, which was Automon and Rex. <laughs> just, just a picture of these two. It's like, yeah, they fucked. <laughs> <laughs> these fucked. bitches. It was fucked. even funnier. Yeah, what's even funnier is that you know you know Rex clearly fucked Mithra, and you know that Audubon clearly fucked Irida, and they're technically the same character. So yeah, you know that they, they won. Yeah, yeah, that's what they everyone won. said. Like, like it's Irida and everything. I'm not too sure, but like all of that, like Irida. it's Irida. It's it, it's Irida. It's Irida. It's Irida. <laughs> you want to know why it's Irida? Because and and I saw this. I don't I don't know who uh, it was. A Twitter account. Like I wish I wish I know their exact name, but. They were basically basically like, oh, it's clearly the descendant of both Ottoman and Irida because while she clearly does look like Ottoman, uh, she wants to take photos of a certain Pokemon. Now, when you take photos, you're kind of documenting the time and of that event, like the moment in time of that event. But you're, mm -hmm. but you also have to have like a lot of patience and a lot of like understanding of like the space of it all. So. Uh, Basically, Perrin being a photographer while looking like Ottoman is the perfect blend of, like, the whole components of Irida's personality of, like, being patient, like, being involved in, like, the space of the world and also capturing the moment of that space by taking photos and documenting the time of that with, like, uh, clearly with Ottoman. So it's like a blend of both. So, yeah, uh, clearly they fucked. And I got you. It's like, it's like Volo like and later. Koji, uh, uh, Kojita and everything like that. Uh, yeah. So, like, that Except they all... definitely... In Kojita's case, she's definitely the descendant of Cynthia. Volo was probably like a long distant uncle. Or whatever. Like the, yeah, the, has they, the Volo has her hair uh, and face, while Kojita has uh, her face and her dress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, like, I, I'm really happy. I forgot her name already. Uh, I did see it and everything, but I completely forgot her name. But uh, she's a 10 out of 10 in terms of the designs. One thing Pokemon never misses female designs. But, um,. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. Like her design is ten out of ten. Um, there's also this other lady. I forgot who she was. That what is he? The principal or something of uh the new area? I forgot her name. You know who I'm talking about though, right? She had like kind of like this, uh, not blonde. It was more like a darker like blonde hair. Yeah, okay, so the so female characters I know is Amaris, which is like the from Blueberry Academy. She's like the the one with the glasses, tip top, like whatever. Uh -huh. She's very like proper. Uh, that's Amaris. Lacey. Uh, she's one of my favorites. Uh, like I really like her design. Like she, she has Rosa vibes. Uh, so that's lazy. Oh, okay. We have we have Carmine with her brother Kieran, which um, Kieran is definitely gonna have. In my case, with those two, Kieran is definitely gonna have his moment in Teal Mask. Especially if you look back at the trailer that one of the trailers they had, that motherfucker had a, an Arthur Fist moment. That I <laughs> wish if I was the angry like, moment. They, 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 they zoomed in on his fist. That, 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 like you can't like not make the comparison. So he's clearly gonna have like funny. some like importance in, in Teal Mask, and then Carmine will be like the focus in Blueberry Academy. That's kind of like how they're gonna do. Okay. And then Briar is like the whole spiel, like the whole thing. Like and you know like she, she's like, oh, you should be here, you should be that. Meanwhile, she's like being like evil Lusamine, trying to figure out how she can like torture the poor turtle into like her research on yeah, like Terra. On Terra Crystals. This, I guess, my theory, like a, a little theory. I do. Uh, I don't know, what is? Nah, I'm not gonna say theory. More like something I kind of wish. I do hope that um, we do get to see Arvin's other parent, like because you know if you're if you're playing you and know Scarlet, cool. you only see Sada. Uh, but it'll be nice yeah, to see yeah. Turo. I don't know if we'd want him to like be researching the past as well, because that is the whole theme of Scarlet, the past. Um, well, well, or it would be cool in that part would be like uh actually they'd be normal he had, it, no it would be more of like oh she was focusing on past paradox i was focusing on future like just do like a switcheroo on that where it's mm -hmm. like oh like we were focused on the past but scarlet wants to like kind of think about the future meanwhile with violet yeah we focus on the future but 
what if we like look into the past like that's kind of how i wish they would play it out mm -hmm. if like they ever bring like the other professors in that in that aspect yeah, and also they did like, different designs for them because i do remember yeah. they did mention that the other parent did leave the other one because like they were so obsessed with their work if i remember something well, along they those say lines? like their partner but we made the assumption that it was like the other professor and that they were married right yeah. we're making that assumption correct yeah okay something something along those lines because i would like to see what happened to them i think it would be pretty nice to have them at least show up like hey look this yeah, you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't play violet here's Turo and scarlet you didn't play uh scarlet here's sada and uh violet and everything you know like something like that or maybe like they'll be more i guess casual because they probably were scientists um it's but like that. but something we'll where see. they weren't obsessed with their desire like for example like it's so mentioned oh, i want to see the future and everything but they weren't like that crazy kind of like how team magma and sapphire for example uh they want they do want like more landmass but they don't agree with the extremist route that aqua was doing in like in those games you get what i mean yeah exactly like, yeah yeah so some, something like what to do with like pokemon emerald because like, you or fought the, the dueling emerald yeah but you fought, yeah but that's where they were both extremists you know with their ideas and everything yeah uh, that's true yeah but other than that like really the other thing i can say is that uh I guess, uh, you know, the new Pokemon, because, uh, I mean, to be fair, all the new Pokemon are just evolutions and then a Paradox Pokemon. Uh, so that's all yeah, we know so far. And it's funny how and they're both the Gen 8. <laughs> they're, both, yes. they're both Gen 8. Two new Pokemon that... Dripplin uh, uh, and Archelon. Drip. <laughs> that's right. I forgot his name is Dripplin. <laughs> well, my man got the drip. But that, that, that to me is funny. We got So we're getting evolutions of two uh, Gen 8 Pokemon. Dripplin... And I forgot the name of uh, Dur Duraludon's uh, evolution, but Archiladon, 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 he, something. He, he's that. a bridge. All I know he is that from a tower to a bridge. We can give uh, Duraludon now an Evulite, and uh, this thing will become a monster. <laughs> That's the only thing I I got from him. Like you yeah. can give this Pokemon an Evu an Evulite now, bro. That's insane. Yeah, dude, it's ridiculous. I love it. I do. I I do like. I do like. Um, Duraldon's evolutions design. I, I think it's cute. I mean, it's supposed to be another. It's supposed to be a bridge <laughs> instead now. Exactly. Like they're consistent with the design, at least from mm -hmm. from it being like a, a building to like it's a, you know it's, it's fine, I guess. Agreed. And then there's Dripplin. Dripplin is. I mean, Dripplin's Dripplin. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like too crazy about it. It's not bad. Um, but I you know I still prefer like Pokemon like Appleton and Flapple a little bit more. That one's just wasted potential, in my opinion, because it's like. You already have Appleton and uh, Applin. No, no, that's not Applin. I forgot the name of the other one. Fla Flapple. Appleton and Flapple, yeah. Hey, and Flapple. Like, you already had those two. There's there's no point in having... It. Oh, Another no, one, yeah. Because they want to do like... No, no, because they want to do like a Tyrogue situation where you have Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and like Hitmontop. So, Hitmontop, you know yeah. It's fair. It's fair. It's, it's fair. It's, it's fair. Let, let, let's give it to the Dragon Apple. <laughs> True. And then other than that, like we did get new uh, Paradox Pokemon. They're do I, It looks like they're doing the thing where they're going to have like different forms of uh, the Gen 2 and 5 uh, beasts. Um, starting with, well, I forgot his name, but uh, the Paradox Raikou. And I'm like, oh my lord, what do you do to him, bro? And uh, Iron something. Raging but Bolt? You know what? You just made me realize something on that. It's like... If you, if you remember with Gen 2, Gen 2 was the first generation of Pokemon where they actually dove into, like, a mythology of, of mm -hmm. like, diving into, like, the history of Pokemon. Yeah, so the, they, their sense, history. Like, yeah, so it would make sense, like, they would want past Paradox Pokemon with Gen 2. Uh, with, you know, Walking walking yeah. Wake, Raging Bolt, and whatever dinosaur I they hope, decide to do for Entei. I hope they do Entei. Yeah, for Gen 5... I think that one's pretty interesting because he, we already know like the history of like the the swords of justice the yeah. swords of justice i think that's what they're called mm -hmm, correct so like for them it's more of like what if they wanted to preserve their history by turning them into robots so i think i, I think that's what they wanted to do it's like i can't see it with any other legendaries to be honest like i can't see that with like larios or larias mm -hmm. uh, gen 3 i can't see that with you know, Mesprit, you see an Azelf. Yeah, I can't you know, see a Paradox like, form of them either. You, you can't see it with all the other guys. But with those two specifically, like those two generations specifically, yeah, 100%, it makes sense. All I know is that everyone's roasting the hell out of Raikou's design. Everyone's like, what the hell hey, is you this? Leave, you leave Raging Bolt alone. Oh, my man I got like, long like, neck. 
I like I like his design. I actually I actually like genuinely love his design. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't understand why people hate it. I like I like the memes of it because that's different. By the way, you know. I think it's because everyone just like cool, cool or cute you, Pokemon. You know. You know? <laughs> They're there. I just I just wish they can be a little bit more ambitious with the designs. Again, with like the future, because like the past, dude, they're they're popping off again. They are, you know. But with like the future one, it's like okay, it's a robot Berizian, it's a robot Kobalian, like ooh. Yeah, there's robotic form. Come on, like, of each play one. around with it, like you know, like come on. So you do believe that we will get one based off Terrakion and uh, Entei then? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that would be so dude, for sure. That would be so cool though. Like, I mean, it depends have, on how they, they would do. have to complete the trio. At this point, they have to complete the trio. They can't just half. They can't half ass it. Be like, all right, here's two, two out of three. Yeah, here we go. Boom, bada bing. They gotta do it. I want something unique again, like like Iron Valiant. Iron Valiant, yeah, it's just a Ralts and Gardevoir combined, but that's what makes it unique. It looks unique. They gave it the Metal Sonic Iron eyes Valiant. and called it an eight. <laughs> yeah, Iron Iron Valiant. Funny enough, if you compare its designs, it's not that it's it's not it's not that it's a combination of Gardevoir and Gallade. It's actually a combination of the mega versions of Gardevoir, Gardevoir and Gallade, correct? Yeah, but which I, is interesting because like that would play a major role in like mega evolutions and like things like that. Which I wish, I really wish they they actually like tell us and confirm us, like confirm that yeah, like the ter- the terras the terra crystals actually have are, like they they are actually used for like the mega mega evolution stones and whatnot like there's so much potential for story there that'd be cool if it was revealed like that because like i mean you can say the same thing for uh paradox uh what was his name uh, uh paradox uh salamance because like he, he's just uh yeah. he's just based off his mega form exactly he's based off of a mega form i had like a, i have a whole i don't know we should do this for like another podcast topic but like i have like a whole theory whole pokemon history lesson about that about like mega evolutions terra crystals z and the bunch like dude i'd be like if we live in the pokemon world i would 100 percent like i would 100 percent. you'd be one of the pokemon researchers i'd be like yo like that's that's like my role i (laughs) I think i think let me ask you a question because this would probably be the best way to like finish like finish this off Mm -hmm. um if you were to choose one pokemon uh role like, like dragon tamer a breeder whatever like what would it be and why that's a good question like i mean there's the ace trainers right that they just become pokemon masters and everything uh technically speaking i mean we still beat them at the end of the day but yeah <laughs> there's the hikers and everything uh definitely not the campers i'm trying to remember uh damn there's a lot of them though like when you look back on them because you said you'd be like a professor, and I do know there is a trainer class that's like a researcher like in Gen 5. I know, I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the scientists, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Gen 4 was like researcher this. Yeah, I would be a Pokemon researcher, 100%. Like, I would be like, I would want to like get like a Pokemon professor. I would, I would like work with like Pokemon professors. I would be like, <laughs> I would be like Cynthia and Steven, basically. Like, yeah, I'm good at Pokemon battling. Like, you don't mess with me, but I also like history and, and rocks yeah no i get you and then like for example like blue was just uh blue was just there to become the champion lance is like a dragon tamer and everything but man I, yeah. who would i fit though i because i don't want to just cop out and say yeah ace trainer you know just trying to be a pokemon master you know i'm pretty sure i mean it's fair it just it's honestly fine it? no 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 i get you just, it... there's just a lot of roles you have to look at and consider you get what i mean yeah so it, yeah, no, I get you. That's something I'd probably have to think a while on. So I don't know if I want to answer that because I don't. I wouldn't want to hold Next this time. up as long. But I will say this though. Um, for now, we'll just go with Ace Trainer. We'll, we'll say Ace Trainer for the time All being because right. I do. I would. I wouldn't mind like you know pretty much making a team and everything going to the top and everything being the champion. But I will say this like That's other fair. than that because I think besides those four Pokemon, the new characters that we got to see. Uh, like the Scarlet and Violet DLC was obviously the best thing of that Pokemon Presents, really. Let's be real here. 100%. But even 100%. then, I feel like this Pokemon Presents didn't need to happen. Um, no. So I will say this. I guess we'll end it off with this last question here. Um, with it being, um, do you have any other thoughts on the Scarlet and Violet DLC? And just overall, like your final thoughts on just Pokemon Presents overall. 
I think I'll, I'll answer it in reverse. That's uh, fine. With regards to like Pokemon Presents, uh, absolutely at this point, it you don't like we don't need them anymore. It's like if you compare this one with the last one, the Pokemon they present like those are fine. Like that one's I get. It's like you want to celebrate Pokemon, but yeah. when you compare the two, they're still the same thing. It's still the same thing. It's still the same, you know, bonus gems for Master. It's still the same thing. I'm yeah, like, oh, exactly. look, a new Pokemon for Pokemon Unite. It's, the it's same. like as if it's Nintendo made a Direct and they just started showing off Fire Emblem Heroes news. You get what I mean? Exactly, exactly. It's, at, at that point, at that point, like, if you really want to announce, like, games, like, for the Switch, just we can wait for Red Direct. We can, we can wait. You, you can have those slots in. Like, you have the money to tell Nintendo, hey, can we, can we put this in for, for the Direct? Yeah, exactly. Like, everything besides there. that, like, you can just throw in like just have a commercial like it doesn't hurt to like transform those things into commercial like you remember commercials yeah those like, video game back commercials then. like actual video game commercials yeah because i haven't like, seen them trailers in a, that we yeah, get? i haven't seen them in like just a hot do that. minute <laughs> bro like just do that with pokemon presents at this one just just do that it's fun it's fun exactly if anything just focus i guess what you're saying is like just focus the pokemon presents on like actual new games compared to like all these free to play games that they just constantly show off, like Masters, Go, yeah, Unite, exactly. all that good, all that good jazz. Like, dude, I would be, I would have been super hyped for an entire fifteen minute Pokemon presents on just Detective Pikachu Returns because they're just focused on that one thing and like, oh, that's actually a new game. Like, why do I think that it's one of the most unpolished games I've seen so far with Pokemon? Yes, but you know, <laughs> like, they're they're at least focusing on a new game. Not things exactly. that we already know are gonna happen regardless, and we can know through a notification on our phone. So, but that's my thing on Pokemon Presents. Like, if it's like, try to make them necessary, not just like a waste of a time. Now, in regards to like my thoughts on like the Scarlet and Violet DLCs, yeah. If I'm a little bit mixed bag, because the reason I say mixed bag is because content-wise, amazing. I'm glad to see what the content's about. I'm glad to see the new locations. I'm glad to see the new characters and like the new like ways they can expand on the story. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is because of the graphics of that game, they're not gonna fix anything in terms of what we experience. To so go back to talk about the bugs and glitches and things like that. Yeah. So it is like a really missed opportunity to like imagine the possibility of like if Pokemon had like the same graphical design as a Xenoblade game and it had this expansion passed, it would have been phenomenal. Kind of like how we felt as Xenoblade fans when we had Future Redeemed. I think that would have been super fantastic for Pokemon. Uh, if, if again, if it had, like, if they actually cared about, like, the quality and, like, the graphics of those games. It's gameplay is gameplay. It's still going to be fun. Yeah, so it's like, Pokemon. That's always something I say. I always have fun with Pokemon games, but, like, do your experience, like, what you think of the overall... I always say, oh, it's fun. But then, like, in Sword and Shield's case, I'm like, there's just something about this game that's missing. In Scarlet and Violet, I'll be like, it's fun. And I'll be like, okay, so the problem is the graphics. You know what I mean? Like, every single Pokemon game exactly. plays the yeah, same. That's, that's going to be enjoyable. Way. I feel the same way. I enjoyed Scarlet and Violet 100%. I enjoyed my time with it. I enjoyed all of it and things like that. I enjoyed getting my Lucario for, like, the 15th time because that's my <laughs> starter. Like, I, I consider that my true starter. Um... But, you know, I just wish it could have, I, I just wish, like, it could have been, like, a Breath of the Wild. It could have been, like, a, a Xenoblade Chronicles, where, like, they really, like, if they were ambitious on that open world, like, actually give a damn about the environmental design and, and things like that. Like, if anything, like, if you were going to use, like, if anything, I wish they used the engine for Legends Arceus instead of using this brand new engine just to say, oh, we can do an open world now. Mm -hmm. I feel like at the end of the day, I feel like at least with Pokemon at the right now, I feel like they should just focus on at least open zone areas, you know, because at least from what we see so far with the open world, you know, I'm not kind of convinced that they can do a good job at the as of right now. So if they want yeah, exactly. to like limit it, just keep it like open zone areas or like, all right, so this area of the uh, Paldea region, was it Paldea? Yeah, Paldea. Um, you, you pretty much go to, uh, what's it called? You pretty much go to this area. Oh, you want to transition to the next area? You just go here. It takes you to a loading. Boom, another open area. Like, can at least make it like four or five, depending on how much they want to make it. You can like move through them and everything. Or, or not just do zones. And this is my last thought because I don't know because we've been here for a while. We have. <laughs> um, 
I, my final thoughts was like, if if you do want to do like an open zone based game, um, you could have like similar to how we had Juva Life City, like the cities could be that. Then the routes would be like that exploration value. You know how we had the wild area in Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. Like imagine like you can still have like the lin the linear 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 path. I can't say it right now, but linear path <laughs> of like a regular Pokemon game where like you, you go to go, but like you can expand that and have like an exploration value and like a semi open world, like in a way that actually feels like engaging and fulfilling. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. No, but I get you though. I get Sorry. you. But other than that, like pretty much, um, I just hope that the Scarlet and Violet DLC is a banger because I, I didn't personally buy the Sword and Shield DLC. That's because I got I did not feel it with the Sword and Shield. Uh, I'll, I might buy Scarlet and Violet's DLC. I did enjoy my time with it, but we'll see. Um, but that's pretty much all I got to say. Okay. Overall, this Pokemon Presents was absolutely pointless. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> it, was. it was. I tell you, like, look, dude, if you do, if when this hits post, I'm going to send you my tweet, exact tweet. What I told you was like, oh, this is what it's gonna get, and like you just slap it on the, on the screen, and we can <laughs> screenshot it. Like just this put it moment. there, like yeah, yeah this yeah. is what happened right here. Boom! This man was a prophet. Like this oh. man was, this man had Shulk's foresight. Like he knew which what was is not coming. The first time it's happened. <laughs> it's not the first time. <laughs> he knew what was coming, bro. He saw the future, but it's not the first time it happened too. Let me do this here. So, like, pretty much uh, at the end of the day, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, unless you want to mention something yeah, else. Right. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty much it. If anything, for, like, next time, I got, like, a bunch of stuff. But Understood. For what we have, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, other than that, um, yeah, so with that out of the way, you want to just go ahead and start shilling your stuff, bro? Uh, got YouTube.com slash... Uh, it will be in the link in the description below. Uh, I'm going to have a video on Sonic GBA games for the fun of it because I am doing because I also do Sonic content. Um, uh, I have a bunch of reviews that you should totally check out. They're fun. And yeah, yeah reach me to, to... I'm almost to 4.6K subs. Also follow me on Twitter on the same name. Let's, let's go. Uh, if I reach <laughs> 5K subs, I'm going to do uh, Ace Attorney trilogy review. I'm excited for that. But obviously, yeah, like, you know, support the content. That's about it. Understandable. All the links will be down in the description below. Um, also, all of my stuff will be there as well. So go ahead and show some love to my boy Briannicus over here. Give him all that love. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. Briannicus, hey, thank you, bro. I'll do it. Always a pleasure, my guy.